Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur with your host, Steve Kidd, third generation minister and 30 year business coach. Listen in as amazing, world changing authors, speakers, and coaches share their struggles and victories. And hear from best selling authors' insight into how you too can live your life as a thriving entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome to Thriving Entrepreneur. Thanks for being with me here today. I appreciate you. So glad to be here with you. Today, we're going to dive into love. We're going to talk about living your business, your life, and even loving the ones you love. Now, I know you're thinking, if you're listening live, hey, Steve, it's March. Shouldn't this have been the middle of February? Well, you know, Today is the day that this came out because today, some of you, maybe even me, all of us really need to be reminded how important love is in all that we do. We need to love what we do. We need to love the people that are in our lives, both in business as well as, uh, you know, personally. We need to love the tools that we're using. We need to understand them. We need to find out what's working and what isn't. All of those are aspects that come into play when it comes to living a life of love so you can love your business, your life, and the ones that you love and really truly live thriving as an entrepreneur. You know, you may be an entrepreneur who is simply the CEO of the business of your life, or you may want a Fortune 100 company, Fortune 50 company even, and even still with that, You need to love what you're doing. You need to love yourself. And you need to love the people that are in your life. Staying in that balance, really truly being in a place of love, that is powerful. It's a great, 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 wonderful way to be able to thrive in all that you do. And I know you want that. So let's take a look at a couple of very, very different ways of looking at the situations, the circumstances, even the statistics of what's going on in our life so that we can love our business, we can love ourselves, we can love the life that we have, and we can love those that we love, that we can then move on and maximize while it's today and to be the best us that we can be while it's called today. And we can live as a thriving entrepreneur. With that said, let's jump right in to our very first guest. I am so excited to be here with you today, an author who is not late, but has appeared exactly when the book needed to come out. The book, Love Your Business, Love Your Life by Alicia Romo. Join me in welcoming Alicia Romo. Alicia, how are you today? I'm good. And I pronounce it Alicia. Alicia. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I promise that I'll only mess it up another thousand times. It could be a drinking game for people listening. Um, that could be fun. <laughs> <laughs> right? How many times can Steve mess up a person's name? All right. Well, I spell it a little differently, so it's common. <laughs> yeah, no worries. All right. So, um, you know, tell us first just a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Wow, that's like get deep right away. <laughs> so about me, um, I I don't know. I like to say I'm a happy, high energy person is how I show up. Um, I like to believe I show up as loving and caring as well. My mission is to help other people rise in their success. And I talk a little bit about that in the book. Um, and uh, I don't know. What do you want to know about me? I live in Arizona. I have one son who I'm super proud of who just turned 23. I am a cat owner. I have a single cat. <laughs> I love warm weather. And uh, I spent, you know, my adult life just, I guess, getting to where I am now, starting out as a teacher and then realizing I was really much better off in the business world. However, still kind of teaching, right? Like, teaching people who are in sales, people who are self-employed, realtors, loan officers, insurance agents, things like that. So I took that teaching career and I was a competitive swimmer growing up and it was a competitive swim coach. So I took my teaching and my coaching into my business life to get me where I am now. 
Perfect. It would have been so funny if you would have said, I have one son who I'm really proud of. And then I have another son who is just abysmal. <laughs> oh, that would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been really funny. Oh, I'm sorry. It has nothing to do with Alicia's book. Did I say it right that time? Alicia. Alicia. See, I, there you go, guys. Another drink. Um, <laughs> but tell us about your book, Love Your Business, Love Your Life. So uh, um, the book is written for people, kind of like I said earlier, that are in sales, self-employed, selling their services. You know, I find that a lot of people are on this up and down roller coaster, income, emotions. A lot of people are struggling and they're buying leads and they don't know how to grow. And a way to make your business super sustainable that I learned through trial and error is all through building relationships. And when I allowed myself to build relationships and build my business through those relationships, not only did the roller coaster of up and down not be as drastic, but life was more fun. Business was more fun. I really went from, you know, I, I went through kind of an ugly divorce and um, was a struggling single mom. And I went from that to really thriving what I consider. I mean, honestly, I love my life. I love where I'm at right now. So I feel like I took those bumps and learned how to thrive in my life and how to love life and have a zest for life. And I wanted to share that with other people. So I just hope the book helps other people learn that they don't have to struggle so much in business. They can get off that roller coaster. They can have more fun. And they can make a business even, you know, working on commission in a way that you love and make the money that you want. And it doesn't have to be this horrible, grueling struggle like most people tend to think it is. Mm -hmm. Such a great point, because all too often, I think we suffer through the work or company that we own rather than just really enjoying it. I mean... You're only going to be here for so long anyway. Why not have life be good? Exactly. right. Make it fun and surround yourself with people that you want to be around and not to be afraid to merge your business and your friendships. And, you know, some people want their business in a box and their personal life in another box. And the reality is if I'm going to hang around you, like I'm having a party at my house tonight to celebrate this book. And if somebody were to ask me, oh, is that someone for your personal life or your business life? Like it's both, it's all, it's one and the same because it's people I want to be around. So the people I get to work with are the people that I want to invite to my house, to my party. <laughs> Makes life so much better. So, if not all of us, some of us at least have worked at places where we really didn't like the people we were working with. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Those of you that have been through that. <laughs> yeah. But you know, when you're in sales, when you're on commission or when you have your own business, when you're an entrepreneur, you have those choices, right? Like you don't always have to work with everybody. You can choose the people you want to work with just like you can choose the people you want to hang out with, right? And sometimes it's what if there's someone around you that you don't like working with, I mean, truth be told, they probably don't like working with you either. So, so at that point, it's like, okay, what can I do to be a better person to that person? So maybe they're going to start liking me and then all of a sudden they're going to appear different and I might start liking them, right? So it's not that I want them to change. However, sometimes if I change, they become the person I want to see. <laughs> That's so funny. So let's be good sales trainers for a minute here. Let's talk to people about something you alluded to, and that's learning how to sell to and work with people that you really actually want to, rather than being desperate and taking any single person that'll just be willing to give you money. Right? So again, it goes to quality of life. Because sometimes if you're selling to someone or working with somebody that stresses you out, that you don't jive with, you don't align with, you know, it doesn't increase your quality of life. And the reality is 
there is enough business out there for everyone. And if you don't work with them, sometimes what I like to do, if I'm not working well with somebody, I have other people that I know that do what I do, right? And so I can introduce them to somebody who might be a better fit. Now that's a win-win for them. And now I have room on my plate to attract in the people I really want to work with. And we all win. What do we do when we realize, okay, so we read your book and we're like, I hate my business and I hate my life. What do we do to give ourselves permission to make that change? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, so that's huge. Um, and honestly, that's a little bit of probably where I was when I shifted into working at, in the real estate industry. And my very first job was with a magazine called The Real Estate Book. And, um, you know, I did a lot of personal growth before I made that shift. And even honestly, before I filed for divorce, that's really where I was. Um, I was doing a business in finance um, that I was not loving. And honestly, it, 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 I mean, it's definitely not the business, right? It was me and where I was in my life and not being happy in my home life at the time, in my marriage. And so in doing some personal growth work, I mean, I definitely, books was huge, but I've read tons of personal growth books. I took some classes and I just really had to gain that inner strength to know, and not just strength, but faith, honestly, faith and strength in the universe, knowing that what I need will be provided to me when I make a decision that aligns with the values of what is important to me. And so when I made that decision of what I knew I valued and I knew what I wanted in my life, like I was crystal clear. I started writing lists of what I wanted my future life to look like and, you know, not just goals, but like vision boards and writing out a vision. And, you know, some were goals with timelines and some were like more big picture, five years, 10 years. And when I got really clear on what it was that I knew I wanted, that aligned with, um, like J John Martini talks about aligning with your highest values. When I aligned my values and started working and living in the way that I knew was true to me, I knew it was all going to work out. And when you have that true belief, it will work out. It's also like that quote, not sure, I think maybe it was Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So when you truly believe and know that what you need will be there for you when you need it, like I'm getting emotional. <laughs> That's when the leap of faith works. It, it's, it's even like a surrender, you know, just a surrender to going in the direction of your dreams. And a willingness to really actually allow yourself to be happy because it's really easy to just be very comfortable, maybe even enjoying being unhappy. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Like I'm a super people person. And in the when I first started transitioning my life, I literally went and got a little part-time job that isolated me from people just to be able to have that transition, right? And I needed that at that time. Like I am normally more of um, an outgoing, you know, people person, an extrovert rather than an introvert, but I have my introvert moments. <laughs> and I needed that introvert time to recharge, to really let my true self shine. Because when I was not happy, my true self was squashed. Mm, so true. So um, much like asking you which of your um, cats you've ever had, because you only have one kid, um, you know, <laughs> was ever your favorite. What right now is your favorite part of the book? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's tough. Um, that's really tough. <laughs> But honestly, I think what comes up over and over and over again in my life is there's a piece that I teach 
about getting to know people and getting people to commit to doing business with you. And it's um, a, a script that's not really a script, right? But it's uh, it's um, NEEDS is the acronym and it stands for Now, Enjoy, Alter, Change, Decision Maker and Solution. And I learned that back from a mentor of mine when I was uh, working selling life insurance and investments. And I have learned that that applies to so many areas of life, not just sales. So when I started learning about networking events and I started going to networking, I used the same questions that I use for needs to learn about people at a networking event. I would stick with the N, E, and A part, learning about people now, who they are now, what's their life like, what do they enjoy in their life, if they have goals or they would want to change or adjust or shift something. And honestly, I've used that script back in the dating world <laughs> on dating apps. So, you know, when I meet someone, I go through some of the same questions. I use the questions in sales. I use the questions in recruiting. I mean, those questions seriously can be tweaked when you want to get to know someone in any rhyme or reason of life. Personal business doesn't matter. <laughs> so give us uh, what those are again. So it's needs, N-E-A-D-S. The N stands for now. So you're learning all about their life now. The E is enjoy. So what do they like to do? You know, what do, what do they, and if, if it's a business conversation, what do they like about their business? What keeps them doing it? If it's a personal conversation, I'm, you know, so what do you like to do when you're not working, right? Um, and then A is alter or change. So it's kind of finding out people's um, hot spots. Like what, what is a pain point? Sometimes people say find a need and fill it or find a pain and, you know, help them solve their pain point. But it's a way to do it in a way of keeping it positive. You're not asking people directly, what are your pain points? Like if you could alter or change anything in your business right now, what would you alter or change? You're going to find out really where they want to be without them needing to necessarily complain about it, right? Um, and then D is decision maker. So that's strictly business, right? If they're going to make a decision on business, do they make it by themselves or do they have partners? Um, and then, or honestly, sometimes in business too, is like, is there a spouse that's going to help make the decision or whatever? And you don't know if you're just like, if you're at a networking event, right? Or you're sitting down for coffee one-on-one -on -one and you just met them three nights ago at a networking event. And then the ass is the solution. And so if you truly listen to what people say about their life, about what they enjoy, about what they alter or change, you know how you can provide a solution if you can, and you know if it makes sense for you to, you know, grow your business together or, you know, some way, shape or form, one can work with the other or work with each other or partner together or whatever it is, right? However, it's about truly listening to their answers to the questions. So the questions work anywhere. However, it, it, if you really listen, you will always know what you need to. And you get to also decide at that time, like we talked about earlier, do I really want to work with this person? Because based on how they answer those questions, you might know that they're not for you. Or you know, hey, I want to work with you and this is how I think we can work together. <laughs> Absolutely. And the book is called Love Your Business, Love Your Life. Let's drop the link in for people who didn't see it in the description. Um, and uh, I do hope that you will get the book. It is available actually today for free on Amazon. Um, we're going to see this book become our next best selling book. Um, please give us a few. Uh, just words of encouragement before we go today. Well, <laughs> man, there are some deep questions. I, I'm kind of wishing I was prepped a little bit. No. <laughs> words of wisdom, you know, truly living your best self, let your true authentic you shine, surround yourself with people you want to be around and be that person that you want to be around. Because if you want to be around you, Others will want to be around you. And when you surround yourself with the right people that align with you, your life and your business, no matter what it is, will flourish. 
Love that. Alicia, thanks so much for being on the show with us here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Do you love your business? Do you love your life? If not, maybe you want to take the time to really find out if you're in the right business, if you're doing the right things in your life, or if you need to make a little bit of a pivot. And that's okay, too. What you need to do is love your business, your life, and the ones that you love so that you can live as a thriving entrepreneur. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back here on Thriving Entrepreneur. If you're an author who's on a mission, stand out with your brand out. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Yep, everything's marketing, and marketing is everything. Your existing book can become a best selling book, or even, hey, like mine, a number one international best selling book in five days. Listen, if your business isn't known by everybody, it's obscurity and that's death, right? The same thing is true for your book. If you're not happy with the way your book is performing, you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling go to yourbestsellertoday.com schedule a talk with steve it's risk-free it's guaranteed it's proven we've done it thousands of times what are you waiting for yes yourbestsellertoday.com this time next week you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve reach the people that you came to serve come on now what are you waiting for grab a pen here we go all you got to do is book a call yourbestsellertoday.com go to yourbestsellertoday.com Book a talk with Steve. It's proven. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. All you have to do is say yes to your destiny. Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today as we talk about loving your business and loving your life. Now next, we're going to talk about a tool that's going to help you be able to effectively market so that you can love the way that you're contacting and the way that you show up in the world. Let's talk to our next guest. Join me in welcoming Jeff Greenfield. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, Steve. Thank you so much for having me here today. Oh, I'm so glad to have you here with us. Tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. That's a, that's a great question. And I, I love the way that you put it there, how how I show up in the world. Uh, I'd say probably the best way that I show up in the world is, is through my family. Uh, my daughter, who is uh, 29 now and is uh, very successful in the in the advertising world. And, and my wife and I have been together for all cl close to... Uh, I think we're coming up on 36 years now, which is just absolutely amazing. But that that's on the family side of things, which I always try to put first. And it, it's t tough when you're an entrepreneur sometimes to really keep focus on what is the most important thing. But right now, in terms of business, how I come up in the world is with a company called Provolytics, uh, which is a next generation uh, marketing platform for measurement in terms of looking at what's working and what's not working, primarily because advertising has gotten very complicated very fast for most advertisers, both large and small. That is so true. I mean, there was a time, uh, you know, when you could buy Google ads and they were totally going to work for you. And then when you could buy Facebook ads and those were totally going to work for you. And, and I know a lot of uh, people that are just really struggling trying to even figure out what marketing does work anymore these days. You're, well, you're absolutely right. When, when this, you know, when advertising, you know, you got to go back before the internet to really understand where we're at. You know, it, it used to be if you were a small business, you bought a Yellow Pages ad. Maybe you did some inserts in the newspaper and and you could ask people, how'd you hear about me? Oh, you know, I, I saw your insert in the paper and you check a box. And then at the end of the month or so, you're like, wow, that, that actually pretty worked pretty well. I'm, I'm going to do that again. And then when the internet came along and then for larger advertisers, they were in TV, they were in radio, things have always been complicated for them. But then the internet came along and it was like, wow, you know, as a small business, I could really focus in on Google ads and, and learn how to do all these things. Facebook is the easiest thing, but the problem is, is that people aren't single channel. They don't just be in one place. There's very few people that are just in Facebook 
uh, or just in Amazon. Us human beings, we like to go to different places. And so as a result, a lot of times you end up paying five or six times for someone because they're seeing your ads in all of these different places. And it makes it very complicated to figure out what's working and what's not working. The other big issue is that the reason that digital has exploded as a means to advertise is because it's so addressable. You can measure it. It's so close. Because before this, it was like a Yellow Pages ad. People would call in or a TV ad. People can't click on anything. But with digital, there's all these clicks. And so what's happening now is we're starting to see more and more uh, advertising platforms that are closer and closer to the sale, such as you can buy ads on Target, you can buy ads on Walmart. And the problem with that is that the sales process for any business is like a funnel, big at the top. And, and small at the bottom. You're lucky enough, some sales trickle out the bottom. But all of digital, at least the vast majority of it, is really close to the bottom of that funnel. So if you're spending all of your money as close to the sale as possible because you can measure it, your funnel is very small, which means your ads actually have to work a lot harder. Whereas when you, when you take a leap and you spend some money at the top of the funnel, well, that's where uh, things pay off in spades. Mm, that makes so much sense. Um, I don't know that I've had anybody really explain it in that good of a detail. So um, how does a person even know where to start? Um, you know, do they just need to hire you and have you help them figure out where they're marketing best or what's even step one these days? Oh, that's a great question, Steve. The, the, the platform Provolytics is primarily for large enterprise uh, companies, companies that are spending upwards of 10 or $20 million more a year. Uh, for, for smaller advertisers you know, who are utilizing things like Google Analytics, I'll bet you all know what I'm talking about when you go in and you look to see where your web traffic came from for your e-commerce store and like 70, 80% of it says organic. And what that means is people just showed up and it's kind of like in Google, you can buy ads for your brand name. And really what you want to know as a marketer is not how did people just get to my website? What was that last click before they got there and bought? What you really want to know is the people who showed up, who knew the name of the business enough to type it into Google or to come direct, how did they find out? because those are the upper funnel. And that's where you wanna be is, now Now I should say the first thing you should do is look at your business and determine what type of business is it? Uh, there's businesses that are seasonal. I, a, a great example is clothing. So if you're a clothing company uh, and someone doesn't buy for, from you uh, in the fall, don't worry, because another season is coming. You'll, you have another shot at them. Every couple of months, you have another shot to get them, if you will, at the top of your funnel and have them flow through. But if you're in a business like the mortgage business, um, most people, in, in, at least in the US, they're only looking for a mortgage once every five to seven or so years. Now, I know when rates were low, it was more frequent than that, but average is five to seven years. What that means is, is that it, if you don't get someone in your funnel today, you may have to wait another seven years to get at them. So that's called that in-market purchase frequency. How often do people buy? How often are they in market? So if you have the type of business where people are in market on a seasonal basis, then you kind of want to spread your marketing budget out evenly, meaning like 25% at the bottom of the funnel, 25% a little above it, and then 25% way at the top where you're, you're planning ahead for the next couple of seasons, if you will. But if you have the type of business where the in-market purchase frequency is measured in years, like a mortgage business, well, you have to keep that funnel full. Otherwise, you're, you're going you're gonna to miss out. For those, you need to be spending 50 to 75% of your dollars to get people in that upper part of the funnel. So that's the first thing, determine that in-market purchase frequency. The second thing is, Look at the data that you have available. And instead of looking at Google Analytics, what you want to do is you want to put in a 
spreadsheet, if you will, how many people have been visiting your website every single day uh, that have come, that have not come from ads, but showed up organically. Now, in order for this to work, you have to have a couple of years worth of data uh, and you, you're going to have to Google and do a little bit of math, but there's something called regression analysis. And what you want to do is you want to look at what is the relationship between people coming and showing up to my website and the ads that I've been buying. What is it out there that I've been doing that's been working? And the way to unify all ads now, because you see, most ads have clicks in the digital realm. But there are ads that don't have clicks. Like if you're sophisticated enough and you're buying a CTV, connected television ads, uh, those don't have clicks. Nobody can click on those. And if you're buying ads on YouTube, very few people click on those. But ads, what you're interested in in marketing is, is what they call reach, which are impressions. And every ad platform that you're buying at, even if you're doing an insert with your local newspaper, they can tell you how many impressions you know, what is the circulation, if you will? And what you want to do is for each of your ad platforms, you want to write down what are the impressions that you had for every single day for that same time frame. Run the regression analysis. And there's there's tons of tutorials out there how to do it. What this is going to do is this is not going to tell you precisely what your next step is, but you're going to have a couple of moments where you're going to say, oh, wow, I, I didn't realize that. Like a great example is we've had clients, these are larger clients that they do these ad buys on like a large site. Like a great example is I had a client a number of years ago who did a buy on the WWE website and they did the buy and you know, it was a 30 day buy. And then they looked at the end of the month, they had no sales from it and very little traffic. So they canceled the buy. And then about 90 to 120 days later, they started getting sales that showed up organically. They had no idea where they came from. And our analysis was able to determine that they actually came from the WWE. And the idea behind this is that sometimes marketing is not about getting that instant sale. It's about setting a message in someone's brain that says, hey, I'm out here whenever you're ready for me. And it takes people a couple of impressions until they say, oh, wait, I'm now ready to buy. And so the idea here is that what you want to do is look at the data that you have and find some gold there that points you in a direction that says, okay, this is working on an upper funnel basis and is going to keep my business moving forward. And that's really what this is about, is keeping that business moving forward and not having to make your ads do all of the heavy lifting. So for the person starting out, and I know you've been talking uh, you know, about two years of regression analysis and things like that. I love it. You know, let's just geek out on spreadsheets the rest of the show. But um, <laughs> but for the guy that's just starting out, you know, they're like, I want to really take my uh, you know, that impressions, that top of funnel, that getting people to know my name so that 90 days or a year and a half from now, they think of me when they think of what I do. Um, how do they start? I mean, where should they start? Is it, uh, you know, in one of your video mediums, whether it's Facebook lives or YouTubes, or um, are, are there things that are really working right now? I won't hold you to it if it changes two weeks from now, but right now, <laughs> are there things that are really working that, uh, you know, the starter should start here kind of thing? Yeah. And it, it, it really depends on the type of business. So I'll, I'll first address B2B, business to business. If other businesses are buying from you, uh, you have to step back and understand there's a cardinal rule about B2B. And that is that, the businesses that are buying, the people that are making the decisions are also consumers. So you have to kind of have that B2B, that business to consumer mindset, but with a little twist. And the twist is that when someone becomes aware of you, however you put your messages out there and they get excited, then they start to get concerned. And the reason they get concerned is they want to make certain that there's no red flags that when they bring you into the business and introduce you in and say, hey, I've got this great idea, that someone is going to unearth something that is gonna 
make them not look so good and potentially get them fired. So understand that in B2B, every person that's involved in that decision is also a consumer, but they're also worried about their job. One of the biggest things that happens in the B2B journey is that wherever you put out messages, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or wherever, people will then go and Google you. They'll go to your LinkedIn. They'll go to all the different social profiles associated with you or your business. And what I have found for most businesses is that just the basic description of who and what we are is different at each place. So that puts off a little kind of the spidey sense, if you will, for the person. And they're like, mm, okay, so what are they? Are they this or are they this? That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you're going to have a blog on your website, make certain that you update it on a regular basis. And also make certain that you don't have the dates there. You want people to show up and be able to see something that maybe you wrote six months ago, but it appears as timeless content. If it's, if it's December and I show up and the last blog post was last February, uh, that gives me even more cause for concern. The other thing is that if you're providing value, which I'm sure you are, if you have a B2B business, you want to make certain that you're extending that value out in your social networks. And that would include things, especially like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is amazing for B2B. So you want to be creating content for there, but you also want to make certain to distribute it to other places as well too. Twitter, Google My Business. And the reason for Google My Business is so that when people Google you, they see the panel show up, they see an update, and that same update that's on Google My Business corresponds with what they saw on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, and your website. So everything's kind of aligned. That gives someone in the B2B space a good enough feeling to say, hey, I'm ready to bring this into my business. So I would say that you have to get everything aligned, but all of those platforms, including YouTube, YouTube works great. Google, of course, owns YouTube. And they love YouTube. So that's a great way to juice up your SEO. If you're in the business to consumer, the B2C type business, if you're selling to consumers with a product or a service, a Facebook is a phenomenal place to start testing. Um, and you need to get specific about your demographic, about who you want to test with. Now, remember, the cool thing about Facebook is that Facebook also includes Instagram. And so what that means is, is that Facebook right now is primarily 45, I'm going to even say 50 plus, which is a great demographic in terms of people in the US who buy things. Uh, Instagram skews a little bit younger, but, but Facebook and Meta overall, regardless of what you've heard out there, is performing incredibly well for lots of marketers. What's happened recently uh, with all of the cookie changes and everything, uh, Facebook is not able to track in-app across wherever you go. So they've lost a lot of signals. And what I can tell you from what we're seeing across all of our larger clients is that Facebook used to, if you got, let's say a thousand dollars worth of sales today, um, Facebook would say you got a thousand and they're responsible for all of it, but so would Google. Now what we're seeing, Facebook is only saying they're responsible for 500. So Facebook is doing what we're calling under reporting right now. The reality is, is that Facebook is a great place to be if you're selling specifically to consumers. And those would be my recommendations, Steve. Hmm, I appreciate that so much. Jeff, if somebody wants to work with you, how can they work with you? Uh, Great. Uh, go to provalytics.com. That's P-R-O-V-A, lytics, L-Y-T-I-C-S.com. Uh, they can go there and they can uh, check it out and click to get a demo. I love that. Well, Jeff, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Uh, my pleasure, Steve. It was uh, uh, great to have an opportunity to speak to everyone. I know it may feel weird to tell you to love a tool, but you need to have tools that help you be able to love what you're doing. Your business needs to be something that you enjoy, that you love doing, and not just an arduous task that you hope you can get through until the end of your life. That's the only way I know of that you can live 
as a thriving entrepreneur. We'll be right back. If you're an author who's on a mission, stand out with your brand out. (laughs) Check this out, guys. Yep, everything's marketing, and marketing is everything. Your existing book can become a best-selling book, or even, hey, like mine, a number one international best-selling book in five days. Listen, if your business isn't known by everybody, it's obscurity and that's death, right? The same thing is true for your book. If you're not happy with the way your book is performing, you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling, go to yourbestsellertoday.com, schedule a talk with Steve. It's risk-free, it's guaranteed, it's proven we've done it thousands of times what are you waiting for yes your bestseller today.com this time next week you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve reach the people that you came to serve come on now what are you waiting for grab a pen here we go all you got to do is book a call your bestseller today.com go to your bestseller today.com book a talk with steve it's proven it's guaranteed it's gonna happen all you have to do is say yes to your destiny Welcome back to Thriving Entrepreneur. This is Steve. Welcome back. We're talking today about loving your business, your life, and the ones you love. So I have left the best for last. Let's really talk about how you can really truly be loving to those that you love. Join me in welcoming Figs O'Sullivan. Hey, Figs, how are you doing today? Very good, Steve. Thank you for having me on your show. Yeah, thanks for being here with us today. Tell us a little bit about you and how you show up in the world. Yeah, I'm primarily, I'm a couples therapist by vocation, psychotherapist, and I help people love each other better. I wanted to, even as I was prepping for this, um, the thought immediately came into my mind. I'd like for you to help us define what's the difference between a long-term loving relationship and a relationship that you should run away from as quickly as you can? Uh, Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, The difference between a long-term loving relationship and a relationship you'd run away from as quick as you can. Oh, I mean, the the first most important one, if there's any domestic violence or risk of domestic violence, you definitely shouldn't. um, You you both would need to work with uh, individually first before you try and do any more work on the relationship so that just goes without saying right that's the um the one time that couples counseling isn't recommended the other thing i think is really important is that the best way to know is if your relationship could turn around from being something that is just suffering to whether you could actually get closer together and be happy together is actually go through a process where you get to study your relation, each of yourself individually, your partner individually, and study what is it that we're co-creating with each other with a third party, like, you know, a couples therapist that knows what they're doing. And then through that exploration and that study of all three of those entities, both of you as individuals and your relationship, At the end of that process, then you would have the data to make a really informed decision about whether we're going to make it work or um, part ways. And um, I'm just being a little bit extra cautious because some of the people that I've dealt with recently, Mm -hmm. but um, I want to, uh, you know, dive a little further into just some basic understandings. Um, So... Can one person make a marriage work by themselves? Um, Can one person make a marriage work by themselves? Well, you know, the old saying, it takes two to tango, right? It, it That's um, in both ways, right? That uh, both people are creating negative systems with each other. Um, but it, it, one person can change the way they're engaging in the system. Um, you know, the the negative system in this in the cycle and that one person starting to do the work and change um, can have a very positive impact on the couple. But but eventually, look, you know, they say you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. Um, 
look at some point you know we like it would take both people to do the work but one person can certainly um get the ball rolling Absolutely. And thanks for going down that little bit of a rabbit trail with me. I just uh, I want to make sure before we talk about good marriages that people, uh, you know, have some definitions of what's good and bad. So thanks for going down that road with me. Let's talk about some primary things to really make our marriage amazing or our relationship in general, even if we're not married. Yeah, well, you know, it's actually this is part just to kind of piggyback on the last part. The difference between a really, really good marriage or relationship and a bad one, you know, it's not actually that different. It's like people have the same fights. They have the same pain, good marriages, good relationships, bad relationships. It's what you do. It's how you interpret the painful moments and how you find your way back to repair after having disconnected a disconnection with each other that matters. So I always say the magic is in the repair. So the most important thing is not that you're like nice to each other all the time or that you're amazing communicators. Most important thing that makes a good relationship is that you can go from bad moments back to good. You can give yourself and the other person a chance to get back to connection. Piggybacking on what you just said. So is that how you would define love as the ability to be able to go from those awkward or difficult or even bad moments back to good connection? Well, how I would define love, that, that's an essential skill, let's say, an ability. And, you know, I don't know, a lot of people never had that modeled for them that they can go from I got my feelings hurt to actually giving the other person a chance again. Um, you know, uh, so bo both for both people, right? So it's a skill, right? It's an ability and arguably the most important ability. But as a definition of what love is, love is just this need, like just biology. Like it's, it's you know, it's not just a magic, it's not some magical thing. We all need to be emotionally bonded because as human beings, we would actually die if there isn't another person on the other side of our birth. So we're physiologically built to, to need another person. It's, you know, it's, it's no, I know that's why all the pop songs, the movies, it's hardwired into our system at the most fundamental level. And so with that being said, and that's like just the basis of attachment theory, the two definitions close, the two then most important things about what love is, is are these two statements true? You're so important to me is that when you're not here, I don't feel good inside. That's one half of wounding and love. One person in relationship, usually that statement is true and they do all sorts of things not to feel that. The other opposite, but also true definition of love, you're so important to me is when you're disappointed in me, I feel terrible inside. So this is the weird thing. It's the pain that actually tells us we love each other. And that's why I was saying this line between a good relationship and a bad relationship is kind of gray because if you're hurting, you're going to interpret it as this is a bad relationship, but actually that pain is like, would you look at us? We really matter to each other. We are those people to each other that we need in order to feel we're okay in the world. That's why we're hurting. Bingo. You love each other. That, that was just such an epiphany moment for me. Um, you know, because so often we've heard or even said ourselves, you know, how could a person stay in, a, in an abusive relationship? You know, and we're outside of it. It's like, well, you know, of course they would just leave. And yet um, it really is that almost, um, you know, creation of the love that that inappropriate action is creating in that person that's being abused. That's that's really an interesting twist there. I I, I like how you put that. You said yeah, it was well, better than yeah, I did. Well, just <laughs> Think of it that this way. I always go through the kid test, right? A baby that is born. We all think we're no longer babies, but when it comes to love, we're all babies still, right? What's a baby going to do when they're born out in the savannas a hundred thousand years ago, right? And mom isn't nice to them. What are you going to do? They're going to leave? No, like their life depends on being connected to them, right? Like so. Look, people are going to fight for love more than anything else. So look, I'm good news for me. I'll always be in business because love matters more than anything else to people. 
right? And so, yeah, look, people will fight for it till the till the end. And this is like some people like they're they're going to complain. My partner's not there for me. They're only complaining because they're in agony inside because they're longing to be connected. And here's the other thing people don't understand. Nobody would prefer to actually watch football than be connected. It's just what they've learned to do to survive the pain of being a disappointment to their partner. And they had it long before they met you. Right. This pain has been inside them since they were a little baby. And both of you have just learned ways to survive that unfortunately sends a message to the other person that they're not being loved, met the way they long to be. So they protest and you both misinterpret what's happening as this is a terrible problem when really it's just a tragedy that both of the ways we survive keep us further apart from each other. But both of us are actually trying to find a way to be safe in connection and in love with each other. Hmm, I love that. Some of your material says that there really is only one relationship problem. So um, is there one solution to what's the problem and is it easy to fix or is it really tough? Well, I mean, it's, so it's really, really simple, but it's not easy, right? You know, the way it is, like it's, it's very simple. It's literally just what I said. Look, we fight because we love each other. It's not a me or a you problem. We both have ways of trying to protect ourselves from hurting and love. But unfortunately, most of those ways of protecting ourselves make things worse. And so, and again, it's just science, right? Nothing woo-woo, right? So once we can help a couple really, really see how would you look at what we're both creating because we're, and it's all happening because we're so important to each other and they live inside of that narrative, right? The entire world changes. Right. We haven't changed any of the problems they're facing, but how they feel about themselves, the other person and who we are together is so much more positive. And they can make sense of why we fight the way we do, why we get this disconnected. And they can have a lot of empathy and compassion for self and other. Um, now, all of a sudden, they can make they can face any problems that the world throws at them together as a team. Wow. That's amazing. So, um, you know, you've done a lot of discussion with couples and stuff like that. If you could give a person, uh, you know, a couple, one piece of advice that you wish they would come to session number one, already have began to work on, discuss, whatever, what would be that one thing? Well, first, let me just say, like, coming to session number one, I prefer people come as they are. I hate, like, when I say I hate, like, it's much better that people don't come prepared, right? Because the, we got to start where you are right now. Though, like, this is a, I always uh, stop trying to be good. We want to see how do you get hurt? What, and then what do you do when you suffer? Right? So, this is around. People are always trying to be good. They're trying to be nice to each other. We stop trying to be good. Stop trying to be nice to each other. We got to see what you what you do and how, how much pain you're in inside in the worst moments, because that's the place we need to create the transformation. Right. So I always like no notes, no preparation. Come as you are. Right. That's the most important thing. Now, in terms of what I would tell them, let's say one piece of advice, let's say that you know the listeners could take away. Start shifting your consciousness from seeing things from the I perspective to the we perspective. You and your partner are in a positive feedback loop that does not feel very positive. You're going to constantly come back to, I am hurting and you are doing it to me. But if that if you're experiencing that, your partner is experiencing the same thing. They're stuck in their their eye consciousness of I am hurting and you are doing it to me. And all all four of those statements are true. Look how we are both hurting and we are both hurting each other. How sad for both of us. That transition from seeing things as these two separate individual narratives to one shared narrative where we are hurting and it's a tragedy for both of us, that's the most, it seems so simple. That changes everything. If you can actually make that leap in seeing that we're a system, it's not just a me or a you problem. And everything we've been talking about so far, we've been kind of talking about relationships 
um, you know, more love based relationships, but everything you're talking about it, uh, you know, would be the same in the business world and friendships and all of that kind of stuff. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, it's just a, you know, the place where this is going to play out the strongest, right? It's like if someone's your primary person, you're going to feel the most pain when you don't feel met by them. But your business partner, if you don't feel seen, heard, respected, considered, you're scared, right, that they're going to hurt you, you're going to have all these same attachment slash emotional bonding feelings come up. And you're going to have reactivity and your reactivity is going to scare your business partner. Now they're going to be, uh oh, now my business partner is looking at me in a way that I'm not being met. They're going to hurt. They're going to get threatened inside. And now they're going to respond in a way that confirms for you. I was right. I am under a threat from my business partner. So now I'm going to double down and triple down on the way I protect myself, which will confirm for them. Aha. I'm under threat too. And both of you cr have created this awful tragedy where you're actually both really important to each other and you both got scared and the actions you take to protect yourself make things worse. How sad for both of you. Now, I would love to help you know, help business partners see, well, would you look at what just happened here? It is a little harder with business partners because it's a little harder for them to become unguarded and only and address just the emotional system that they've gotten into each other um, and not the practical. Mm, I love that. So um, for somebody who would like to work with you, how can they uh, take this deeper than just a few minutes here on the radio? How can they get in touch with you? Yeah, I mean, you can find me and my team of therapists and coaches at empathy.com. And that's empathy with an I in the end, not a Y in the end, dot com. And we do counseling, coaching. We have courses, podcasts. Um, we have a an app we built for couples, where you can all free. You know that you the app is free, that you can learn about who you are in love and relationship from the latest science. Um, and yeah, so just yeah, empathy with an I in the end, not a Y in the end. dot com. Love that. Well, Figs, thanks so much for spending some time with us here on the show today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Never let those most important of people in your life know that you love them and take the time to express how much you love them on every aspect. And remember to love yourself too, because you are uniquely brilliant. You were created for a purpose and the world needs you. Please know that you are so impactful and so important in this world that as we love the business we have, as we love the life that we have, we love those that we have in our lives, that we give love to ourselves as well, that we maximize while it's called today in every aspect of our life, in our business, and in the way that we show up in the world to greet this day with love in our hearts, as Ogmandino says in The Greatest Salesman in the World, and to live every day as a thriving entrepreneur. Until we're together again next time, I hope that you have a great week. Thanks for listening to Thriving Entrepreneur today. If you want to get your question answered, send an email to questions at wehelpyouthrive.com. We look forward to you joining us again next time. author who's on a mission stand out with your brand out <laughs> check this out guys yep everything's marketing and marketing is everything your existing book can become a best-selling book or even hey like mine a number one international best-selling book in five days listen if your business isn't known by everybody it's obscurity and that's death right the same thing is true for your book if you're not happy with the way your book is performing you got that far and then it just fell off the face of the planet kind of feeling go to yourbestsellertoday.com schedule a talk with steve
believe. It's risk-free. It's guaranteed. It's proven. We've done it thousands of times. What are you waiting for? Yes, yourbestsellertoday.com. This time next week, you could have a beautiful seal on your book and get the attention that you deserve. Reach the people that you came to serve. Come on now. What are you waiting for? Grab a pen. Here we go. All you got to do is book a call, yourbestsellertoday.com. Go to yourbestsellertoday.com. Book a talk with Steve. It's proven. It's guaranteed. It's going to happen. All you have to do is say yes to your destiny. Destiny.